Our world is a happening place. 200 odd countries, scores of issues, military and economic wars, protests, breakthroughs, pandemics. The most dramatic events capture the mind space. And in the process, some very significant but gradual shifts remain below the radar. Tonight, we'll talk about one such. As the world remains caught up with Russia's war and China's expansionism, Saudi Arabia is making important moves. In fact, let me walk you through some recent developments. First, Saudi Arabia and Iran, sworn enemies, Sunni and Shia states, they decided to bury the hatchet and engage. Second, peace talks began in Yemen. It suffered a war for over a decade, a proxy war between Iran and Saudi Arabia, and now peace stands a chance. Third, Syria's isolation is ending. It's being welcomed back to the Arab fold. And fourth, Saudi Arabia is siding with Russia on oil production, consistently refusing to toe the American line. All these moves are courtesy one man, MBS, Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, also the de facto ruler of the kingdom. What is he trying to do here? He's trying to forge unity in the region. He wants to bring West Asia together as a common front on the global stage. So when headlines said that Saudi Arabia will engage with the Hamas, it seemed like the obvious next step. Their ties have been frosty since 2007 and Riyadh was trying to revive them. So a Hamas delegation was invited. But at the last moment, some reports said that Saudi Arabia did not grant them visas. It seemed a bit odd. Why would you invite a group and not give them permission to enter the country? Well, that question has a one word answer. America. Apparently, engaging with the Hamas was a step too far, and the US put pressure on the Saudis to abandon the plan. Let me put this in context. The Hamas is an armed group. It is fighting for Palestinian statehood. The US calls it a terrorist organization. So does Israel. Most others call it a militant group. But the Hamas sees itself as a political party. It rules the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip is a Palestinian enclave surrounded by Israel and Egypt. Hamas has members in other territories too, like Syria. And this group is backed by Iran, Israel's perpetual foe. Every once in a while, when tensions flare up between Israel and Palestine, the Hamas attacks. It fires rockets at Israel, and then it faces retaliation. So Hamas is an enemy, both for the US and Israel. And the Saudis inviting this group sent alarm bells ringing. The US drew a line in the sand, and the visit of the Hamas delegation has been canceled. Sources say pressure from Washington is the primary reason behind this cancellation, but there are two other reasons too, two other sources of opposition, Israel and the West Bank. Let's explain and understand Israel first, it doesn't have a formal relationship with the Saudis, but it does have informal engagements. In the last few years, many Arab nations recognized Israel. It happened with Saudi Arabia's blessings. So it's a delicate, covert relationship. The Saudis hosting Hamas would have hurt it. The second source of opposition could be the West Bank. It's a Palestinian region ruled by the Fatah party. Their president is called Mahmoud Abbas. As we speak, he's in Saudi Arabia. And the Fatah and the Hamas are rivals. So hosting both the groups at the same time would have been complicated. These two factors could have played a role. But finally, it seems the Americans had the last word. Their relationship with, with Riyadh has been poor off late. Saudi Arabia has snubbed the US on many occasions. But this time, it was perhaps not worth the risk. Hosting Hamas may not be worth inviting America's ire. And Saudi Arabia is playing this game quite carefully, working with new partners like China and Russia, engaging with old foes like Iran and Syria, but not antagonizing the Americans completely. After all, the Saudi defense establishment is still largely dependent on the US.